knc.com the loudest.com on the planet i have the pleasure of speaking to the frontman of one of the best death metal bands from the 90s please welcome thomas Lindbergh, vocalist for at the gates how are you doing man all good here how about you very good i'm very very honored to speak with you at the gates has is a historical band uh, a big name band uh, bringing forth the Swedish death metal uh, scene and uh, congratulations on 30 years, man. 30 years so is uh, a real, um, it's a real accomplishment. What, what do you have to say about that? Well, yeah, I mean, of course we were not there for all those 30 years. Well, <laughs> yeah, I don't know, but uh, we're here though, you know, that's what I mean. Yeah, I don't know. It's, um, Time goes fast when you're having fun, I guess. <laughs> that's, <laughs> True, yeah. that's how I could sum it up. In death, playing death metal is fun. Right. There, there was there was a, a brief hiatus, and um, due, due, due to the fans, you know, you guys came back with a vengeance. And uh, today we are here to talk about your new album, The Nightmare of Being. And it just happens to be released today. So another again, congratulations on that. Thank you, man. How are you feeling on this new album? What is it that fans can expect from The Nightmare of Being? Well, we're very happy with it. I mean, uh, of course, we worked, you know, longer and harder on this one than anything else we ever done before. Mm -hmm. uh, the response has been really overwhelming, positive, a lot of a lot of nines and tens, <laughs> so to say. So it, it's all good. Uh, we're happy that we have a listener base that are, how can you say, it? Um, patient and also curious. You yeah. know, when they come to the they uh, they give the the record the time it deserves. You know they they understand that there will be new stuff on every At the Gates record that they haven't heard before, and I'm very happy that they uh, have the patience to go into that. The, the, the album is pretty uh, how can I say it like big and uh, cinematic, I guess, layered, textured. There's a lot of things going on on this record. Right. I had a chance to listen to it and I'm still soaking it in and enjoying every minute of it. And uh, you, make a bit, you make a good point that, uh, you know, there's a, there's a bit of gap about three years since your last release to drink from the night itself. And, uh, and I think uh, it's, it's healthy to keep a gap between releases. You know, people, fans get so eager to release, you know, albums year after year after year, um, which is kind of, which is basically what the Gates did early on in your career. You guys were releasing, once you guys came out and debuted with The Red in the Sky is Ours, every year you guys were putting out an album. But now I think it's healthy to put a gap between every album, wouldn't you think? Yeah, I would agree. I mean, you have to take in perspective that we were 20 years old at that time. So we probably were, we were very impatient, <laughs> you know, at that point. Mm -hmm. uh, now we have a lot more of, uh, you know, how can I say, with a lot more focus, the band is important for us in another way these days. You know, we, we do it on a level that we want to do it on. And um, I, I guess I think for this time, also like the whole, you know, pandemic thing kind of, yeah. you know, we, we had nothing else to focus on. So we, we, yeah. we went deep this time. Yeah. Did you, did, uh, during this whole pandemic bullshit, were you guys already in writing mode? Yeah, we were writing before, but, you know, this gave us a chance, so to say, to go back and revisit the songs and, and mm -hmm. work on them harder, figure out other arrangements, other, you know, orchestrations and stuff like that, that, you know, maybe wouldn't have been there if it wasn't for this. So uh, it gave us a necessary escape <laughs> from the yeah. world, yeah. this creativity, but also, I mean, the album, I think it became a better album because yeah. of it. I, I hear that often from bands that have, that have recently put out releases that this whole uh, past year, Gave them a little, little bit of time to go back and and uh, touch up things or re-record things. So, so the album itself, you guys had completed its, you know, when how when did you complete the album? I think the, the, first, time around, the first time around. Yeah, no, the the pre-productions uh, were kind of finished. Uh, the first versions in the summer, we went back and during the summer we worked on the songs more. Uh, studio time was booked in November last year. We spent. Uh, Two and a half months in the studio, mm -hmm. so it's 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 stuff that we've never done before. But you can hear that on the album. I think is that it has a lot more detail and mm -hmm. complexity. I guess. Yeah. Know. Is there anything else that you guys did differently on this one that you guys didn't do on "To Drink from the Night" itself? Well, I mean, we we uh, we had a pretty 
how do you say it? We had a common goal. We knew what we, what we wanted to do with the record. But to get there, we needed a lot of input from, you know, the producer and, and stuff like that to, to kind of actually uh, transcribe everything on the on the demo versions to a full, you know, to a full production mm -hmm. so that all these small details and layers are, are audible on the record. So that took a lot of work in the studio, but uh, I think it was worth any minute, every minute of it. Yeah, you're really, you guys are. I'm sure you guys are really happy with the end product. And again, the nightmare of being it's out today. Make sure you pick that up, stream it if you like. But always, always buy that you know album, buy the merch. And uh, you guys are also going to be hosting a uh, live stream of the album tomorrow, right, on YouTube? Yeah, yeah. There's it's like a what do you call it, like a playthrough, you know, with the, with the artwork and everything, like the full album stream. Mm -hmm. Not going to be there the whole time to you know chat with the fans so to say and, and hang out a little bit i've done like i've done that quite a few times now like uh, for the first time on this record because you know we can't meet them in person so it's been pretty cool actually people are very happy that uh, you know that we try to keep contact with the fans still you know yeah i mean like i mentioned again it's like i i think i don't know if you agree but like the fans really had a voice in bringing at the gates back you guys uh came back in like 2007 and then there was no discussion of making an album. And then all of a sudden you guys come back with At War With Reality, which was like one of the comeback albums of that year. You know, how, since your comeback, how, tell me more about the fans. Like what, what is it that uh, brought you guys back besides the, the fans, like, you know, just wanting you to return? I, I think in general, you know, the the first comeback, like the live reunion shows were mostly Anders' idea because he was the guy that left the band in the 90s uh, and hence we broke up. So I think he wanted some kind of closure. Mm -hmm. um, but I think everybody felt it, you know, during those those shows that, you know, this is too much fun. This is too, re too much rewarding and mm -hmm. our fans are so awesome. So, you know, we, we kind of like took a break. Then we started working on the documentary, the Under a Serpent Sun documentary, me and Anders. And even if it's a different format, we were creative together making that movie. And I think we kind of both felt that, you know, why why would, wouldn't we try writing music together again? Mm. I mean, that's what we do best. And that's like the creative process is the most fun part of being in a band, I guess. So. Sure, sure. Was it was it hard to get back into the swing of things once you guys reunited? Like, oh, you know, this is this is at the gates. I mean, you were involved with many other things, but was it hard to get back on the bicycle? I think for us, it was, the, it came to the, you know, the fact that we're, we, we had been active in other bands all the time during the hiatus. Uh, so like the actual musicality and the playing was already there. You know, it was just to, had to find that at the gates tone again, you know, at the, at the gates core, so to say. And I, I guess, you know, like that's something that grows, grows, you grow into it, you know, and uh, I think definitely, definitely on the, on the comeback records that we've done since, we've, we've been trying more and more to search for that, the deep core of what the band is to us, you know, and, and that's so much more than just sort of the soul, so to say, you know, because <laughs> yeah. there's so much more to this band. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you guys have really like embraced the the more melodic side of uh, of your sound, and and uh, I, I think a lot of fans will gravitate towards that. I mean, definitely, especially me, Slaughter of the Soul, one of like the pinnacle albums of the time, you know. And uh, and the '90s, you know, brought out so many great bands like At the Gates. Tell me about how you saw the change from era to era, from the '90s to like now, as far as you know, the music scene and how you approach the songwriting. I, well, back in those days, we were very young. You know, we were started the band when we were like 16, 17, broke up when we were 22. <laughs> so it's, oh. those early day, days are like hard for, because we were, you know, so much part of that underground scene. So that was our life. You know, it was, yeah. it's hard to reflect upon those days. But I think like in the mid 90s, we, we saw like a, a kind of decline of how much effort it, the bands put into the records. Is, you know, just releasing, like you said, like just releasing another record every year and just going for it. That's why we wanted to really put a lot of effort into sort of a soul. Um, and since then, you know, we, we were playing in smaller projects during the hiatus. But I, I saw the scene changing and I'm, I, I think like the whole internet uh, thing and also like the 
how can you sort of like the home recording thing being, you know, getting From analog to digital. Yeah, and very easy to record your own stuff. That made like the scene explode a little bit, I think. And mm-hmm. I really like it that uh, a lot of young bands can put their product or like the music, they can record it cheap and they can put it out without a big record label. So there's a lot less compromising to get signed these days, I think, you know, and that's yeah. why we see so many really original bands coming up that wouldn't, you wouldn't have seen in the 90s because the record labels were looking for, you know, the next into the, you know, whatever, you know, yeah. next Pantera or whatever, you know. Yeah. Uh, but like you know, there's, there's like a, a while the formula works with the bands you mentioned. Like I mean, there's there's definitely a benefit to like break away from the norm and stuff like that. You know. Yeah, you know, and I think this climate we have now is kind of it gravitates more towards that. You know, and I like it also that you know young bands can get heard, you know, easier like easier now. And of course, that was available back in the days with us as well. But then it was you know the tape trading and all that. Yeah. You know? yeah. So it took a lot a lot of more effort. <laughs> Yeah, but uh, I, I would imagine it was a lot more enjoyable, too, because you have much more of an interaction, whereas like now with the Internet, it kind of just feels distant, you know? Yeah, I, yeah, definitely. I'm, I'm very happy that I was there for that, of course. You know, I would never trade, the, trade that away, you know, it was perfect for for a teenager, you know, being involved in the, in the underground death metal scene. That was that was perfect for me, at least. Yeah. And I, and I think, uh, sadly, it's one benefit that I think a lot of young bands will miss out on because you don't realize it at the time while you're networking, but that's a learning process, you know, it's, it, it, yeah, yeah. it, it, it helps your business, it's your, it's your business, you know, you're helping it grow, you're interacting, and that's how you build a fan base too, you're interacting with the fans and, you know, the tape trading was a big deal and uh, you, you know, you mail it out and like two weeks or a month later, it reaches the other side of the world and all of a sudden, yeah, yes. it was it was it was totally different time. I know, I, I know what you mean, but mm-hmm. I mean, I, I think the people who grew up grow up now they don't, you know, they've heard about like the stories of old, so to say. Yeah. But I mean, they live in the now, so I mean, they embrace it. The the, the tools that are there for them at the moment, yeah. I guess. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely, you have to adapt. But I, I would say that you know, keep in mind the history. Like, don't don't ignore your history. You know what I mean? It's it's always no, no, no. Yeah, yeah. Tell tell me about like let's continue with the nineties. Like, what is it in the nineties that was going on as far as the music scene? What were you engaged in? Like, what made you want to be you know, a, 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 a front man? I think I mean we started out like my earliest band started out like in eighty eight. So we were like already in the 80s starting out to do this shit. And, uh, I think it's like the sense of uh, comrad- camaraderie, you know, and like this underground feel that you're part of something. It's it's a very important feeling for, for a teenager, you know, to, to, to have that, you know, like you're, you're part of something that's bigger than you. And it's also very like el- elitist a little bit, you know, like as we, you know about it, but you know, no one else does. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. I think that was the important charm of it as, as well. I mean, of course, then the the music, for me, like the death metal music of, of the late eighties, uh, it really drew me in with their. With, it's kind of like, how can you say it? It's like a, the emotional impact of the music was very mm-hmm. very big for me. Mm-hmm. Yeah, the the content was really intense, you know, and uh, for young minds back in the day, it's like it was unheard of, you know. You had duck or death. With, and Chuck and, and Possessed, you know, uh, coming out and, and you know, the, and the 90s were a big era for death metal, I think, you know. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, I felt it got watered down a little bit in the, in the mid-90s, so, like, that feeling. So that's, yeah. that's, I think that's what happened to us as well. We're like, we didn't want to be part of that, you know. Yeah. But it was it was struggling because you know you know you had like grunge and and then you had like new metal kind of affecting things and people were like oh I'm gonna go this way I'm gonna go this way but then you know like yeah, you, maybe, said, yeah. you, you had the elitists that stayed true to like death metal and supported that cause you know so I think it's important to stay true. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so as I mean, you anyway, said, here here we are, thirty years later. So <laughs> yeah, yeah, and um, so again, congratulations on the release today, the nightmare of being through uh, Century Media. Now, uh, we mentioned labels and how bands, you know, uh, relate to labels. Before you guys went on hiatus, you guys were with Earache, one of like the biggest like death, extreme metal labels back in the day. What was the transition like from Earache to like, you know, the big gap in time now with Century Media? Like, is that working out okay? 
Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, uh, when we realized that we were going to record an album, we, we, we put out feelers, basically. And we had a lot of uh, old friends at Century Media that were, you know, that we trusted, so to say, like they had been part of the underground scene for a very long time. And they really believed in like the idea of a new Etta Gates record. So they, they embraced us, you know, and they also just signed up for us like for one album at a time, which we oh. wanted. Okay. Which is amazing. I think not many bands get that chance. Okay. So we, we've been very, very happy where we are. And uh, for this record, they've been really wor worked really hard on this record. Uh, I'm very happy with them. Yeah, very good. And then, I mean, it's safe to say, like, it's it's a sure bet if you're going to sign at the gates. I mean, <laughs> it's, 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 it's going to be a hit, I think, you know. So um, also, I want to mention, um, we were talking as we're trying to set this up that uh, you're a social studies teacher. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and congratulations! You had some students uh, graduate recently too, right? Yeah, they just uh, went out in ninth grade uh, two weeks ago. So that that was uh, and day before yesterday was like the day they got like uh, into high school. Like you know that their the grades were measured, so to say, against other students, and they they all got in. And I'm super happy yeah. for that. You know, they do not have been let down. Someone, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's a great job on you, man. Uh, uh, we we over here we used to call it junior high, or now they call it middle school. I don't know if they call it that. Yeah, no, it's, we we have a different system. It's it's quite weird, but it's like uh, up until you're fifteen, sixteen, you go to like public, like you know, to normal school, so to say, mm -hmm. uh, and then you start what we call high school. I guess you know. Uh, so I I had like the last ninth grade for quite some years now, and I really enjoy it to like push them. A little bit harder on the last year. Yeah. How, how much uh, are they aware of who you are and what, who at the gates is? Well, I mean, they know what I do uh, on my spare time. I mean, sometimes I have to go away, and you know, we have to to, to Zoom call with them and stuff like that. Yeah. But I mean, it's being a teacher is a lot about having you know, like uh, being respected and respecting the kids, building like a relationship that they can trust you. Yeah. Uh, so to be like the cool teacher doesn't really help that much. I try try to be as normal as possible in the in the classroom. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like it's 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 a weird transition from being a front man to like raging audience to like being a front man in the classroom to like all these kids and stuff. Oh, well, it's all about connection, you know, and building the relation, and that's what we do on stage as well. So I mean, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't be a good teacher without the kids, and I wouldn't be a good front man without uh, the people in the audience. So yeah. it's about it's about that interaction. Yeah. I would, I would think the parents probably are like the ones that, that recognize you more. They're like, oh, yeah, you know, I heard your records back in the day, you know? <laughs> yeah, there's yeah. been some of that, but yeah, it's, it's cool when it happens. Yeah, like parent so to... are pretty fun, I'm sure. <laughs> <laughs> I try to keep it on the down low, you know, so I'm no, just being the, bo the boring kids. normal teacher. <laughs> so uh, going back again, the Nightmare of Being, it's out today through Century Media. Make sure you guys pick that up uh, tomorrow. Uh, check it on YouTube and you guys can hear it in full and uh, chat with Thomas here. Um, now, when you guys returned, you guys originally had the Slaughter of the Soul lineup. And how's it been working with Jonas after replacing Anders? It's been working well. You know, like Anders was at a time in his life when, you know, this is not a priority for him anymore and he was really worn out by the touring and stuff. So we needed a member that was keen on, you know, pushing pushing it a bit further and it's been working out really well uh we known jonas since uh, the late 80s he's been part of the underground death metal scene here it's mm -hmm. been since a long time he's our age he has the same reference points so it's it's like getting you know another anders <laughs> basically you know just it's uh we never really considered anyone else actually so it's working out well so far that's pretty good yeah yeah, yeah. very good very good and um I wanted to ask you as far as like uh, before this whole past year, um, I even almost hate to mention it by name, but the pandemic, like were you guys on the road or were you guys uh, about to hit the road? We did some shows like that was like the end of the campaign, so to say, for the last album in uh, February, I guess it was. Um, we had a few actually anniversary shows for sort of a soul that mm -hmm. summer booked that are now postponed to next summer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so it's like, it would be the 27th anniversary instead of the 25th. Yeah. But um, otherwise we, we were, you know, we were in already in writing mode. We were 
taking time off to 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 write and record the record. So in one way, you know, it was the least worst time for us for this to happen in one way. Yeah. And then uh, you guys are jumping back on like I think some, some big festivals, right? So like, uh, are you guys planning on doing like one of those like full album concerts or? Uh, well, we've we'll been be, be talking about it because there's a lot of, you know, extra musicians on this record. So we, if you're going to do something, you're going to have to do it special if you're going to play the full album. Mm -hmm. uh, and there's been talk of that. But uh, we, we've been booking shows from December onwards. Now we start here in Sweden in, in December and then we're oh. probably going to fill out the whole of 2022 okay. uh, with shows and also festivals. Yeah. So, so you're, it's waiting, waiting until, you're waiting until December, the end of the year to get started? Yeah, we, we have some shows in August and September that are not just not yet cancelled that we will do if, if uh, everything is going it like it should. Yeah. But otherwise, like the whole the real tour starts in December, just to be sure, you know, that we, that we don't have to cancel anything again. Yeah, yeah. And plus, like, it, it's like a starting gate, like once the gates open, like all these concerts came out of nowhere. People's wallets yeah. will just dry up because it's going to be so hard to like get tickets for all these things, you know? Yeah, I know, and that's why we wanted to, to start early on booking in 2022, so we, we don't lose out. So, you know, you want to play a show in New York, for example. No, no, there's no dates available. Everything is booked. Okay, yeah, well, yeah. you know, we don't want to get in that situation. Yeah. So you probably won't be coming back to Los Angeles until next year? Uh, probably next year, yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, I'm, I'm sure I speak for everybody. Like, we'll be, you know, biting our tongue and we're eagerly waiting for you guys to return, so, uh, Los Angeles has always been good, so yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Of course, of course, you know. Uh, Thomas Lindbergh, frontman for At The Gates. Uh, the Nightmare of Being is out through Century Media. Um, you mentioned that you have a lot of guest appearances on this new record. Can you tell us more about that? Well, we, we started working with uh, some uh, people like some classically trained musicians on the last record, and we were really keen on like exploring that further. So we just basically told them to call their friends <laughs> and arrange parts for, you know, like this flute, uh, all kind of, you know, horns and strings and, and stuff like that on the record. But it's the same people that on the last record, but just expanded into like, instead of four, it's like 10 or 11. <laughs> you know. So you went the actual natural, like actual live musician route, whereas some bands, they just you know, punch it in. They 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 uh, pro uh, program it in. So you got, but you guys went the actual organic route. Yeah, I yeah, yeah. We started, of course, writing the parts digitally, but then yeah. transcribed them to 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 make the real persons play them live. Yeah, what you hear on the record is not natural sounds. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome, dude. Like I, I love that you go back to that organic sound. You know, because I mean, it, it works like when it's programmed and stuff like that, but. Uh, that's, that's, I think, an, ad, an added bonus when it, you actually get like an actual organic uh, backing, actual musicians and stuff. That's amazing. Yeah, and I think that like every instrument has a personal emotional tone and you you can't really you get there with digital, I guess. You know? yeah. Or you can, but I mean, yeah, I mean, like it's it goes back to what we were saying, like we have to adapt with the times, you know. And, and you've seen that, the, the process of, of like, you know, recording from analog to like digital and you just got to it's hard to adapt to that, right? Like, you, especially when you were on hiatus so much, it's like, okay, what do, well, I mean, you, I mean, you were still active with bands, but the, the transition is a little bit difficult sometimes, right? For the so Yeah, no, but I, I, as you mentioned, as we were active the whole time, we kind of learned what was going on and, you know, adapted and tried to, like, use digital stuff uh, in the way that we wanted it to do it and still use some analog stuff as well, you know, to get the right feeling for us, what we wanted out of it. All right. Now, um, I want to thank you for your time, Thomas. It's been a great pleasure to speak to you. Um, is there something that you want to tell the fans who have been there or like new fans that are just, you know, realizing who at the gates are and, you know, in regards to the new album or your legacy? Well, I mean, we, we are here because of, of you guys, everybody. So it's, uh, it's great. It's a great time for us to be in at the gates. Uh, to have such uh, true and uh, honest and uh, believing fans that we have. We're very happy with that. And we can't wait to go out and play this new record live for, for everybody. It's going to be a, a real, real blast to finally hit the stage again with this material. 
That's great. Yeah. And uh, I've heard it and it's an outstanding record. I'm sure it's going to make a, a album of the year for a lot of uh, album of the year for a lot of the fans. And uh, I want to thank you for your time again. The Nightmare of Being Out Through Century Media today. Make sure you pick that up, uh, you know, download it legally, buy that shit. Because that's the most important thing you guys can do. Buy that merch and uh, buy those tickets when they hit your town. And uh, Thomas, thank you for your time and uh, give a horns and a fist bump to the rest of the At the Gates camp. And uh, thank you for all your years of uh, great, amazing music. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time as well, man. Yeah. Cheers. See you.